After that exercise, you can practice Dream Theater, Glass Prison, Arpeggios, uh, Nevermore, The Godless Endeavor, uh, Jason Baker Altitude, and then if you have balls, you can practice Jason Baker Seren. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, hold on a minute. Wait. A minute. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Talk about a jump in difficulty. This is video number two of my riding the coattails of other people. Doing a live response reaction to something I have not seen. So, the title of this video is Sweet Picking is Easy! Fix your sweet picking in three steps! So, very curious what the hell this is going to be about because I found sweet picking to be ridiculously difficult when I learned it. I still think it is one of the most one of the most difficult things I've ever learned and I always warn my students when it's time for them to learn it it's it's gonna be a bitch because sweet picking holy crap holy crap but hey let's find out let's find out with uh, Oz guitar Oz guitar that's the man so let's see let's see what he has to say hi guys welcome to my channel in this video i will show you how easy the sweep picking technique is if you have never been in this channel my name is Özgür Türkekul i am a guitar instructor and i've been teaching guitar for a long period of time so for more information you can check out my personal website Let's get started. So in sweep picking technique, we have three main points and they are all connected. The first one is landing your pick. So I am playing E minor arpeggio and as you can see, I am landing on to the next string. For every strings. All right, let's talk about that. When I, what, was, what did I do when I learned sweep picking? I remember, uh, I was gonna give a story here. I guess it doesn't really matter. I just remember the first time I saw it, I was blown away. But when I practiced sweep picking, I never did any of this rest stroke stuff or landing on the pick thing, or landing on the pick, landing on the string. So. <laughs> course we're back to a shape I don't practice worth a damn like I, this is another shape if you watch the stream of the uh, the last one I did where I was going over burnt's sweet picking arpeggio stuff I was like I was just butchering the shapes there's some shapes I'm okay with but this one is not so fantastic and I'm not gonna metronome this up right away either how did I practice doing this stuff uh, well the first thing I learned was three string shapes <laughs> And I never practiced with doing like making sure the pick hit the other string and like when I work with students I don't tell them to make sure that that happens either. I'm just making sure like just hit the note, hit the string. Maybe like practicing that guy. So, this isn't my usual pick, but you can see it easily. So, like, when I'm building these things up, when, anytime I'm practicing it, my main thing is just, like, making sure that the right hand and the left hand will do this well. I'm just making sure both of these, the right and the left, are, are matching up. I never worried about making sure the pick always hit the string. To me, it feels like if I'm always going to make sure the pick is hitting the string when I'm working on something like this. It 
it feels very rigid to me. Now, I'm not saying that what Oz guitar is saying, I'm not saying what Oz guitar is saying, that word well me, I'm not trying to imply that what Oz guitar is saying is wrong. All I'm saying is my experience and what I, I do with my students. For me, it feels very cumbersome trying to make sure my pick is always hitting the next string and doing these, this rest stroke stuff. My main thing is just hit the damn string, <laughs> hit the note. What kind of neck pickup is that? This is a Sustaniac and it's freaking awesome. So comment in the YouTube, let's read that by Ozman. I don't know if it's Oz guitar, but it is Ozman. So I don't think it's hard, but I've been doing it for a while. When I started, it was by no means easy. The concept, not all that difficult, but clean with speed. Yeah, it took many hours. Well, yeah. I mean, this is like saying, well, the concept for all this stuff is pretty easy, right? I mean, how do you play guitar? You just hold a note and you pick it. Easy concept. Now, yes, doing the sweet picking while doing it fast and all the notes are separate and everything sounds super, super clean. Yeah, that's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass for me. Maybe I just suck. Let's continue. <laughs> Like, when I am descending, same. When I am ascending, too, it is the same. So this part is most common mistake because most of the players land on the next string when they are descending. But when they ascending, they just pick one by one. So when you practice, you have to land on the next string when you are descending or ascending. So this is the key point about sweep picking. Maybe that's why I feel I suck at <laughs> sweep picking, because I never do the landing thing. Um, what I've always told my students, like when working this up, it's like, a, like a, a common question is like, am I supposed to make it feel like a sweep, like, or it doesn't feel like a sweep at this speed? And for me, the sweeping motion just kind of starts to happen as you gradually go faster and faster and faster and faster. Um, and I can say that the angle of your pick makes a huge difference in terms of the ease of playing this. I don't know, I, mean, I suppose that if you're doing like the, uh, what he's saying there, making sure the pick lands, perhaps, perhaps, he, maybe he's gonna cover this too. I don't know yet. Um, but like, making sure that you have the proper pick angle is very important here. Because like when you're doing the ascending portion, that pick needs to have some kind of uh, tilt to it. It's so like the butt of the pick is just slightly down at least. Like really exaggerating, it needs to go like that. And then for the descending, it needs to come back this way. So you know, you're eight, doing the ascending portion. You, the pick needs to be tilted someone like, somewhat like that. And for the descending, it needs to be tilted somewhat like that. So this way, it's not hooking into the strings. So, a lot of people, because they do a lot of downstrokes in this genre. Probably used to doing that kind of angle because it fits very well for that stuff. Notice if I do it like this. See, the pick is now digging into the string like a like a fish hook type deal or, or a barb, right? So if you're trying to do like a bunch of heavy palmy downstroke stuff, with the pick is pointing, the butt of the pick is up like this, or upward pick slanting, as it has been called. Uh, yeah, it's you're gonna have a hard time having very fluid downstrokes there. So same thing with. 
an arpeggio. So once you come up here, you need to make sure that that pick goes the other direction. Because if you don't, and you're doing stuff like that, then yeah, I totally agree with Oz guitar right now. Because if you're doing that pick angle, you know, you're always trying to escape the strings this direction. So even if you do an upstroke, because the pick is angled like this, you have a tendency to come up and away. Whereas if you angle the pick this way, when you do your upstroke, you'll have a tendency to fall into the strings. And when you're strumming stuff, that kind of happens naturally as you rotate your arm and your wrist this way. It's like when you go down, you know, your pick starts this way and then it goes out the other way and is ready for the upstroke to come this direction. So the next point is pick slanting. Whoa! So when you are descending, your pick has to look up. And when you are ascending, your pick has to look down. Well, look at that. Look at that. This is just the thing I was talking about. Very cool. So now he's talking about it. So this is that moment. Down. So my pick looking up, down, up, down. And the third point is the direction of your pick. When you change your pick direction, you have to start with the same way. So, if you are like descending, you have to start with the downstroke. So, and this is one of the most important thing about sweep picking. So, upstroke, pull off, upstroke, and you jump on the string and start with a downstroke. Okay, so these are three main points about sweep picking. And last thing, you have to get a continuous sound. Now, when I was learning it, and there's certainly nothing wrong with how he did that there, I think it uh, comes down to personal preference in how you want the arpeggio to sound. So, like, he did the, uh, the pull-off, but no hammer on it. Right? I'm not used to that stretch. So, when I was taught how to do this stuff, my teacher had me do a hammer on pull off, which is what I have students do as well, because I feel you can get way faster doing it that way. Really be using a shape I know, but this is the shape he plays, so I figure I probably should do the same. See, I feel like it's you slow down. It has a different sound, slightly different sound, right? When you do the pull off, but no hammer on. Man, I can go so much faster by doing the hammer on. So how about that? Uh, if you're working on trying to get your sweep picking even faster, and perhaps you find yourself getting hung up on the top portion where you have the pull-off, try doing a hammer on first into the pull-off. Maybe that'll help you get just a little bit faster. A little bit faster. So what do I mean? I call it ambulance sound. Instead of like getting a little gap between two notes, you need more fluid sound, like ambulance. So it's the synchronization of both ends, left and right, and this is the most important thing on sweep picking. Because if you sound like this, It's not sweep picking, so you need... So to get that, you have to practice slowly 
and you have to increase your speed step by step. So I will give you a two string exercise for you guys. Um, well, I'm glad he talked about just doing it slow and then step up the speed bit by bit. I don't know what his or like what his uh, progression approach is to that stuff. But hey, if you know me, you know it's start at 60, which is what he's got right now. His this tab he has on the top of the screen, which we're going to check out. It does have it starting at 60, so that's cool to see. And yes, going up in increments of five is my recommendation. And then getting to the point where, yes, you are pushing, pushing very, very hard mentally and physically. But a lot of it's going to be mental at first. Because, uh, yeah, you got to get to a point where it's very challenging. You have to get to that point of things are not comfortable. You got to get uncomfortable to grow for sure. Even if that just means mentally, because we got to get challenged. Or because if if you feel comfortable when you're working on this stuff, you're not really getting much better. You're not going to get much progress done if you feel comfortable doing these things all the time. Got to get uncomfortable. Anyway, let's check out the two-string exercise he's got for us. So I will give you a two-string exercise for you guys. Okay guys, so I think you get the idea. You have to practice that for every string combinations. And so as far as that exercise goes, if, if you wanna get good at rolling all four of your fingers, yes, I think that is a very good exercise to do. Does it tie into sweep picking? Yes. I personally like to avoid rolling my finger as much as I can during sweep picking because of how easy it is for notes to want to bleed into each other and create the sound of a chord. Like, I much prefer to use a different finger each time I go to a new string when possible. It doesn't always work out so well. But uh, just wanted to throw that in. And after that exercise, you can practice Dream Theater, Glass Prison, Arpeggios, uh, Nevermore, The Godless Endeavor, uh, Jason Baker Altitudes, and then if you have balls, you can practice Jason Baker Serenade. Whoa, 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 hold on a minute. Wait a fucking minute. Jesus Christ, talk about a jump in difficulty. I. <laughs> um, can you do that? Sure. You, you might want to work up to that, that level of challenge a little bit slower. Because um, that, to me, just seems like, you know, you go from uh, doing a body weight squat to trying to squat 500 pounds. Like, good luck. Good luck with that. I, I highly re recommend... Uh, yeah, a bit more structured progressive approach besides going from the two string finger rolling exercise he just presented versus jumping into a bunch of, what was it, John Petrucci? Whoop! Or, yeah, so if we have balls, we can do Jason Becker's Serana, right? I guess I have no balls because, uh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay, guys, so. Sweep picking is that simple. You have three main points and that's it. Practice slowly and increase your speed gradually and practice these songs step by step. And I think in one month or two month periods, you'll be able to play all of these songs if you practice properly. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I hope. Well, at this I mean, maybe he's trying to keep his, his lesson short here. Um, I, I'd like to know his take on what's practicing properly. And just saying that in a month or two, you can play all those songs. 
Well, what if you've only been playing for two weeks? Probably not. Even if you've been playing for two years, there's a very good chance you still won't be able to do that. Um, it's going to be very different from person to person. How much time you have to practice is a big thing. How much level of concentration you have is a big thing. If you know what is considered proper practice is a big thing. Uh, knowing what to do when mistakes are made is a big thing. Uh, knowing how to take those songs and break them down into smaller pieces when necessary in order to make progress is a big thing. So, but perhaps working with him, because clearly he's got quite a few students who have gotten very good at sweet picking that he had at the intro of his video. So, very curious what his progression would be and what he thinks is proper. So, that's one thing I would have liked to have heard in this video. So, he has good points in there. Some stuff I would not do, and I did not learn sweet picking that way. I am not convinced that sweet picking is now easy. I still say sweet picking is an absolute frickin' pain in the ass. Maybe the concepts are easy, but the execution, being able to do it well, clean, precise, and fast is all, is all hell. Man, man, that's difficult. Mm -hmm.